Unfortunately, we have to start off this episode with a fairly serious conversation about my family. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I have an older brother. Yes. His name is, let's say, Joe. Yes. And in the interest of fairness and full disclosure, um, he's my older brother. He's four years older than me. He's he. We are family, and I will always love him. And he's also a big fucking dick. Okay. He's just a dick. And and I would feel weird about saying that if it wasn't for the fact that I'm 98% certain that he would agree with that. <laughs> he's one of those he's one of those dicks that knows he's a dick yeah. and is kind of proud of being a dick. So uh, saying that is in no way offense. He's a dick. He knows he's a dick. He's a dick. Um he he has spent decades just fucking with me. Yes. And at times making my life an absolute living hell. We never got along until alcohol got involved. <laughs> we didn't get along when I was little. We didn't get along when, when we were old when we were younger. We didn't get older when we were teenagers. We never got along until we could both drink. Uh-huh. So the Maple Room, the Maple Room, the dirt bar in Sacramento that we yes. frequented almost every day. It was a it was a rough time. My 20s were a rough time because literally we would be going to the bar and closing the bar like five or six times a week. Yeah. So it was it was it was a it was a rough time. I remember the first time I went to the Maple Room, my brother's driving me over there and he said uh, he said, uh, no, hey, when we go to the bar, Stevie, don't be all weird. OK, don't be all weird. I know I know that you're weird all the time. Just don't be weird, okay? These are my friends and I and they like me and I don't want you weirding them out with all your weird stuff, okay? So don't mention Ed Wood, don't mention your stupid church. Try not to be so stupid and making jokes and stuff. Just be cool, okay? Just be cool, okay? So so don't be weird. I really like these guys. I'm always talking to them about Phoenix and how cool Phoenix is and how much People like me in Phoenix, so just just be cool, okay? Don't just don't do anything stupid. <laughs> so of course, like the first night that I'm there, for no reason whatsoever other than I want to piss my brother off, I I sing a a heavy metal version of Britney Spears, <laughs> and 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 his friends all love that, and and you know after like a week or two. Joe's friends are like, oh, my God, Stevie, you're so awesome. You're so cool. We really like you. We're happy that you're hanging out with us. Hey, can you do us a favor? Can you get Joe to just fucking stop mentioning Phoenix all the time? <laughs> it's really annoying. Like, hey, we know you like Phoenix. You don't live in Phoenix anymore. You live in Sacramento. So stop fucking talking about Phoenix. So, yeah, so that so that's that's a little story about my brother. My brother was notorious. When we grew up, my brother was notorious for not allowing me to have anything on my own. Yeah. But, be you know? but before we leave the dirt bar, okay? Yes, 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 the dirt bar. I just had an idea concerning that, but with that idea aside, it should be pointed out anyway. You had once done an absolutely beautiful fucking blog post. Oh yeah, about the dirt bar. I mean, you made many blog posts about the blog posts about the dirt bar, um, but there was one in particular that was much more of a story. Yeah, yeah. Than an accounting. That. You know. Yeah, no, uh, and it's good. absolutely beautiful. Uh, we should see about doing that up as a three D animation. Oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. No, I that was a good that story. story. I had I had yoinked yeah. it from you a while ago. I don't think I still have it though. Yeah. No, it's somewhere. Yeah. I mean, God, I don't know when the last time was I went to the blog, but yeah. But no, that was a good story. Yes. I had, I had wanted that to be a part of the Edward Bible that I always say that I'm working on. And yes. I guess I kind of am, but. So, so I, I could, I could never have anything on my own. Anything I had, he had to also have 
or he had to be a part of. I couldn't just live my own life and do my own thing without my jealous older brother turning it into a contest that I never wanted to compete in in the first place. Yes. For example, I love Mystery Science Theater. He goes out and he buys all of the Rhino videos. (laughs) So I have a bunch of friends in high school and suddenly my brother wants to hang out with us. Yeah. Like, like Tom's coming over and then my brother's there. Hey, where are you guys going? Oh, so we're going to the mall. No, we're not going to the mall. Tom and I are going to the mall. You're staying here. You don't have to come with us. Why are you coming with us? Why are you coming with us to the drive-in? It's a bit odd. You know what? Whatever. I guess you're hanging out with my friends now because I can't have my own friends. Yeah. I used to make my friends and I used to make movies together with our video camera. We made such legendary movies that no one has seen such as flying meat. Yeah. uh, Blue, which was my art film and death to all of the lovers. So of course, suddenly my brother has the best idea for a movie ever and has me get all all of my friends together so we can make the film. (laughs) So I create my, here's, here's another big one Mm -hmm. that still just blows my mind as if, as if all of the things I've said, so far aren't enough this really cements it i have my own religion he created one too did he he had his own religion he gave up on it because he doesn't have like the 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 stamina (laughs) the trumpian stamina she doesn't have the stamina so my brother doesn't have the stamina but he created his own religion yeah And, and it was the religion of pro wrestling and it, it it wasn't enough that you were a member of the Church of Pro Wrestling. Whatever you believed in changed with each wrestler. Okay. So there was Mick Foleyism, and there was Stone Coldism, uh-huh. and there was NWOism. There were all these different categories when you went into the Church of Pro Wrestling. Hmm. And he worked really hard on it, and then gave up. But for a while, he was convinced that his religion was going to be so much better than mine. Okay. Because I can't have my own religion without my brother literally just barging in. Yeah. And I and but see, and, but see, okay. Now he may call you stupid, but you've got to recognize that he obviously knows you're cool. And vicariously, if he steals these things from you, vicariously, he becomes cool. Yeah. Well, they say that, um, uh, what is it they say? That, um... They probably say a lot of things. (laughs) They said shit about my mother once. That wasn't, that wasn't called for. That, um... Yeah, they said, they said that, that Adam Sandler was going to win an Oscar for Spanglish. That's what they said. <laughs> there is a period in time when they would, when people were literally saying Oscar hopeful Adam Sandler. Oh. That was a Adam Sandler is headlights. That people we're saying, yeah. How many weeks has it been? We have still not gotten rid of Adam Sandler. Hey, that wasn't me. That was they. <laughs> that was all they. That was they. Once I this felt, is now. Yeah. Once I started loving Ed Wood, like junior high, high school, like sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth grade, my brother went out and tracked down a number of hard to find Ed Wood movies that I hadn't seen yet because the internet wasn't the internet. Yeah. And that really stung the fact that my copies of Jailbait and, and uh Night of the Ghouls and Orgy of the Dead were were actually my brothers. Oh. Now, now, right here, I should probably preface things, and and I think I'm pretty far in the story to preface anything. But nevertheless, my older brother isn't dead. That's not where this story is going. Okay. I just want to be clear about this. My brother is alive. Um, my brother isn't dead. Is he dead inside? Of course he is. We all are. Welcome to 2017. 
<laughs> We're all dead inside. But my brother isn't really dead dead. I, I think I think I have an idea where we're going. Go ahead. Good. I, I, I don't I, you probably don't, but it's okay. Okay. But Joel made my life a living hell. And my parents didn't help matters at all. Most of the time my parents made matters worse. Like I remember one time uh, uh, I was at an arcade playing video games and my mom apparently went to my brother and said, here's $10, go get change, give Stevie $5, Joe, and you can take $5 for yourself. So my brother went to me and said, here is $2.50. This is what Terry said you can have. And I said, okay, and I played video games and then I was done and my mom said, you're done already? And I said, yeah. Uh, Joe gave me two fifty, and Terry said, "Oh, I gave I gave him ten dollars. He was supposed to give you five, and then I, but he gave. I remember saying, but he gave me two fifty. Mom, you need to get in trouble." And then my mom said, "Hey, it's not my fault that you didn't stick up for yourself. <laughs> you should have stuck up for yourself and gotten the full five dollars. It's not my fault that you're so much of a wuss, Stevie." How were you supposed to know that there was a full $5? I, I don't know. I don't know. There was one time that we were driving to school. We were driving home from school. There was a small period in time in which my brother and I, because we went to a Catholic school that went from kindergarten to eighth grade, there was a small period in time when my brother and I went to the same school. And I remember we were driving home. I must have been in fourth grade, and he was in eighth, I guess. Yeah. Um, or maybe I was in third grade and he was in eighth. I, I don't know. But we were driving home and we had just gotten the schedule for the month that showed all the things we were going to get at the cafeteria. And on the side was a little, um, uh, what is it, a, a crossword puzzle. And my brother said, oh, Stevie, I bet I can beat this crossword puzzle before you and i said okay i bet i can do really really good i'm gonna try my hardest and i'm gonna do good so my mom said okay i'll be the judge you guys start now and so i worked so hard and so hard trying to get it all done and i was so proud that i was like halfway done when my brother said i'm all done it was easy and i got really upset and i remember being really 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 upset and so when we got home and everybody went inside the house i just stayed in the car because i was so upset and i got the the schedule and I th- crumpled it up and I threw it on the ground. And that's when I noticed that the answers were in the back. Yes. And so I went to my mom and I said, Did Terry, Terry, Joe cheated. The answers were in the back and he was just looking at the answers the whole time he cheated. And I should have won because I was trying with, without cheating. And my mom said, well, Stevie, Joe was just smarter than you. Oh, you should have re. He, he didn't cheat. He just outsmarted you. You just got outsmarted, Stevie. So, and and the, the one that, that really that really pisses me off is that I, I was like eight or nine. And um, may, I don't know how this came about. The only thing I can think of is maybe I was trying to watch too many horror movies a, on cable because we had just gotten cable. Yeah. And so my bedroom was right next to this giant, like double sized window that opened up really easy. And I just became convinced that while I'm sleeping, someone was going to open up the window and jump in mm-hmm. and like kill me in my sleep. It was going to be a robber. It was going to be a robbery, a break in. And they were going to come in through my huge, massive windows and they were going to see a little kid there and they, would, they were just going to kill him. So I would stay awake as long as possible because I was afraid that once I went to sleep, some robber was going to come and kill me. I was just convinced of this. Mm -hmm. I was an eight-year-old, and I was absolutely convinced that that I was going to be killed in my sleep by a robber. (laughs) So I, I, I don't know what to do, and I'm super scared. So stupid me, I say... I should tell my parents about this. That was a mistake right there. Because my parents weren't really parents. I don't know what they were, but they weren't parents. So I went to my mom, and my mom was in the kitchen, and I said, Terry, because I never called her mom, Terry, I, 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 I haven't been sleeping, and I've been really scared, and I'm, I'm pretty sure 
that a robber's gonna come and kill me in my sleep. And apparently my mom overheard me, misheard me. She didn't hear me correctly. Mm -hmm. And she thought that I said that I was scared that my brother was going to kill me in my sleep. Okay. And my mom thought this was fucking hilarious. Okay. And she started laughing in my face and called Joe into the room so that she, my mom could tell Joe how funny it is that I think he's going to kill me. Mm, and that's... from that point on, for like two years, my brother kept pretending to kill me. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You and know? I would try, like, with tears running down my face to explain to my mom, no, I didn't think, I don't think Joe's going to kill me. I think a Robert. No, I heard you, Stevie. You said that your brother was going to kill you. You're scared your brother's going to kill you. And that's stupid. And yeah. then my brother would be, like, slowly getting a knife, you know, and acting, like, doing, like, the the shower scene from Paswaicho. Yeah, so my, my childhood was awesome. I guess is what I'm saying. Psychological scarring, yeah. So here's here's the big story that I wanted. Hmm? Here's the big story that I wanted to say, and I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Yeah. So, so I wanted to talk about the field goal story. I'm pretty sure I haven't talked about the field goal story. It does not sound familiar. Okay. So we were really super young. We were living in Phoenix, and my mom. Uh, had my brother and I in the car and also her friend, uh, Brittany's mom, whatever her name was, I don't remember. She was a mom from, she was the mom of one of the other kids at my Catholic school uh -huh. and she was from Mexico. So my mom and I were like, her mom and my mom were like BFFs and they would always hang out all the time. And so we were hanging out and and they had just got they were on we were on the way home and then my mom just decided she was driving she said i've got an idea why don't we go to dairy queen kids do you want to go to dairy queen i can get you kids uh, you know some some ice cream wouldn't you like that and my brother said yes i want to get ice cream that's cool but i said no because gumby's going to be on in 15 minutes and i don't want to miss gumby I was okay. a huge Gumby fan. Gumby was yeah. some trippy ass shit. Yes, it was. And I loved Gumby. And they played Gumby every day at like 3 p.m. on Channel 15 in Phoenix. And I had to rush home so I could catch Gumby. And my brother said, that's stupid. You don't want to get ice cream because of Gumby? And I said, well, yeah, I like Gumby. Gumby is cool. And I want to watch Gumby. And so my brother said, well, fine. We can drop <laughs> stupid Stevie at home. And then we can go get ice cream. And my mom said, no, Joe, you have to stay at home because you have to take care of Stevie. We can't leave him home alone. He's a crybaby. We need, he needs to be with someone. So you have to go home and take care of him. And then my brother said, well, can you get ice cream for us? And my mom said, I'm not going to get ice cream for you. If you guys want ice cream, then you guys need to come with me to Dairy Queen. I'm still going to Dairy Queen. I'm getting Dairy Queen for myself. Oh, God. And for my friend Brittany's mom, I'm not getting ice cream for you guys. If you want ice cream, you should come with me. My brother said, but I want to come with you. And my mom said, well, tough luck. You have to stay at home with Stevie. I'm going with Brittany's mom to get some ice cream. Oh. So the, the both of so my mom dropped the both of us off at home. And I'm completely clueless to how my brother feels about this. <laughs> I'm just excited to go home and watch Gumby. Yeah. So I I'm I we she pulls into the driveway and i'm all excited and i jump out of the car and i'm super excited and i turn on the big ass knob on the tv and i mm -hmm. sit down on the floor the door is open to the tv to in to the the tv room where i'm watching tv and i'm sitting down indian style all happy and excited right in front of the tv waiting for gumby to come on gumby's going to be on in like 5 minutes yeah now the tv room has a big, long hallway, and at the end of that hallway is my brother's room. It's a huge-ass room, and it's his, and he gets the biggest room because he's Joe and I'm Stevie. I have a small little closet of a room, but whatever. Um, eventually, here's a good 
happy part of the story. Eventually, my brother realizes that there's a tiny beam that kind of crosses through the roof of my tiny ass little room. And in in the 80s hair band way that my brother was, he said, hey, that beam in Stevie's room, that would be awesome to hang up my heavy metal posters. <laughs> so teenage burnout Joe switches rooms with me. So I get this big ass massive room. Yeah. Eventually, we're still in the house when my brother marries and his and his wife lives in the house with us and she has a baby and i refuse to leave the big ass room yeah in retrospect i probably should have given the big ass room up to my brother and his wife and the baby they had but i said no that motherfucker shouldn't have switched rooms 10 yeah. 11 years ago that's his fault yeah so I'm really happy that I got to keep the room. But anyway, you um, really, you, know, you really, really need to block all this out of your head somehow. Oh God, no! I'll, Swallow I'll, I'll, your I'll... feelings down deep, deep inside. That's why I never. This is a, a good portion <laughs> of the reason why I never talk to my family. But anyway, I'm sitting on the floor. There, um, there is a lot of similar things with my sister. Yeah, you know, very, very yeah. similar kinds of things. She yeah. would she would sell you something and you would have it about a month and then she would need to borrow it and you would never fucking get it back. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. So so I'm sitting on the floor, I'm waiting to watch Gumby. The door is open and all the way down the hallway is my brother's big ass room, and my my brother comes into the house after arguing, yelling with my mom because he's pissed because he doesn't get ice cream because I want to watch Gumby, and he slams the front door to the house, and still I have no clue what's going on. I'm just excited because Gumby's about to be on, and he stomps into the hallway and he goes to his room, and I still have no clue what's going on. He slams the door to his room. And I still have no idea what's going on. I'm just excited to watch Gumby. Eventually, yeah. he opens up the door to his room, and he looks down the big, long hallway, and he sees me there all happy and excited. Gumby comes on, and I'm singing the Gumby theme song, and it's the 80s, so it's the, the, the 80s Gumby theme song. Like, he was once a little green slab of clay. <laughs> Gumby! You can see what Gumby can do today. And my brother has no knowledge of this happening, yeah. which isn't surprising. My brother has completely blocked this out of his memory. But, but I remember every second, my brother gets so pissed that he basically takes a running charge at me. Okay. Running as fast as he can towards me. And when he finally gets to me as hard as he can, he punts me. Yeah. He lit I'm sitting on the floor and he does a running charge, this big bull. He's always been taller and heavier and stronger, and he runs right towards me. And once he gets to me, he just kicks me as hard as he fucking can in the ribs. And nice. I fly across the room yeah. and I slam against the the wall of of the room yeah and i'm laying on the floor and i'm crying and i'm in freaking tears and my brother goes into his room and he slams the door and apparently promptly forgets the entire event that just happened where he assaulted me yeah and my ribs are in pain and i feel like they're broken and i'm crying and there are tears running down my eyes and i don't care about gumby anymore i just want my parents i just want my mom which is ridiculous because my mom never liked uh uh any sort of physical contact yeah like i can never hug her or touch her or put my head on her shoulders or anything so i don't know why i wanted my mom because my yeah. mom was never really there but i want my mom so i go outside to to talk to my mom and of course my mom's not there my mom's at dairy queen getting ice cream without us yeah so i sit on the floor of the driveway 
crying, waiting for my mom to get back. And it's like 45 minutes until my mom gets back. Yeah. She gets back because she has to drop off Brittany's mom at, at, at Brittany's house. So she, she gets ice cream with Brittany's mom. She drops Brittany's mom off. She comes back. She sees me crying and she goes, Stevie, what's wrong? And I tell her what happened. And my mom absolutely doesn't believe me. <laughs> She's like, what? Joe kicked you. Joe would never kick you. Joe's a good boy. He would never kick you. He would never hurt you like that. You're just being silly, Steve. You're just making up stories. He would never do that. I can't believe, if anything, you're going to get in trouble for lying because you would, he would never do that. Oh. And so and so, I get really pissed off, and I decide that I want to hurt my brother. So this is what I do. I get one of those WWF wrestler figures. And back in the 80s, they weren't action figures because action figures move. These were just heavy big, massive, yeah. like, foot-tall yeah. plastic monsters, and they didn't move. Well, kind and... of kind of like the McFarlane statues. So yeah, of. yeah, were, yeah, except all plastic, all, like, rubbery and, and heavy and, and, like, a stretch Armstrong that couldn't move. Yeah. It's just this big, heavy thing, and I decide I'm going to throw it at Joe's face, I'm going to throw it at his head, I'm going to, like, break his nose, and he's going to be bloody and he's gonna cry and i'm gonna get back at him so i get one of these big wrestler guys and i open his room and i see him there and he's at his desk and he's writing and so i throw it right at his face and i say i hate you and i throw it at his face and he didn't apparently didn't hear me and bent down because he dropped his pencil and the wrestler goes right through his window okay so guess who gets in trouble for this yeah I do because I broke his window. Mm -hmm. My brother does not because no one believes he would attack me. Yeah. So this is so, so my brother wouldn't let me have anything on my own. And uh, my parents didn't give a fuck. So life with Joe was difficult. Uh, he even stole bipolar from me. Yeah. He stole bipolar from me. Bipolar was my thing. And then he discovered that he also had bipolar. And I, I know he has bipolar because my brother and I are a good example of the two types of bipolar. Mm -hmm. I, my brother sometimes has anger issues and he lashes out and he can be violent and he hurt me and he would get into arguments with his girlfriends they'd be yelling and screaming and breaking things and just just scary loud massive violent arguments yeah. and i have those arguments too it's just all in my head about myself <laughs> these are the two yeah. types of bipolar yeah. i think when people think bipolar they automatically think like 2007 britney spears so i don't like telling people that i'm bipolar because they're going to assume that i'm going to lash out and be irrational yeah. and shave my head and go insane. And I'm like, no, that's my brother. I, there's a bipolar where you hurt other people. And I, I have that bipolar, except I don't hurt other people other than myself. I hate yeah. myself. Yeah. My brother hates everyone else but himself. Mm -hmm. But still, I feel like if I had cancer, like tomorrow, if I wake up and I find out that I have cancer, yeah. within like a week or two, my brother would be South Parking it. He would have his nuts inside of a microwave. <laughs> just just getting a little cancer, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Just give myself a little cancer. It's okay. Just give <laughs> myself a little cancer, Sharon. <laughs> so that he could be braver about the cancer than I am. Yeah. That that's basically what would happen. So it should, it should come as no shock then, after all of this, uh, my brother, my freaking brother, started a rubber band ball because, of course, See, he did. See, this is where I thought it was going. <laughs> and it is going there, but then it takes a bizarre detour. Okay. Of course, he started a rubber band ball because I can't have anything. We're in our 40s now. Yeah. And he started it all sly, too. He's like, hey, Stevie, how do you start a rubber band ball? And I'm like, okay, why? And he goes, oh, I'm bored at work. I just want something to do. Yeah. I saw your rubber band ball, thought it would be fun. So I tell him how to do a rubber band ball. And then like five days later, 
he says, we'll work on, he's on Facebook, we'll work on the rubber band ball has, has started. I'm really excited. I'm hoping soon I will beat my brother Steve's rubber band ball. And it's like, God damn it, like I'm 40. Yeah. You can't, you still won't let me have a freaking life. But now it's an obsession with him. Apparently my life is a contest that he has to win, right? Yeah. Okay. Be okay. flattered. Be okay. flattered. But then let's put out this challenge. Okay. Okay. Because yes, you're making a rubber band ball, but you're also working on making TV shows. Yeah. Make a fucking TV show, Joe. Let's see what you really got. Yeah. So, it, it, in fact, just like a like a week or so ago, he no, posted I, a picture I, I, of his rubber band ball. Right, and I saw that, and I fucking winced when I saw it. Yeah, and how close he is to beating his brother Steve's rubber band ball. Yeah. Once it becomes a, once once it became a contest for him, the whole rubber band ball thing. I started working three times as hard on it because I refused to lose and I'm not going to let my brother beat me and yada, yada, yada. But I would literally be working so hard that by the end of the day, my fingers were bleeding. Yeah. That's how hard I was working on the rubber band ball. So eventually I, I for eventually, eventually I just like tapped out. I'm like, you know what? I, I give up. I, my life is my life and it's not a war. It's not like a Festivus test of strength or like a contest. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to give in to this. But we we did contribute. Yes, you did. We, yes, we you sent did. rubber bands, and one of them was a special rubber band. I forget what yeah. it was, though. And, you, and was that uh, rubber Jean, band, baby? You don't remember? And Jeannie wrote like a little note, and so I put the note in the rubber band ball. Yeah. Like, like the note was attached to one of the rubber bands, and I just went, I'm not taking this off. This note is in there. <laughs> so Jeannie's in the rubber band ball. Nice. Yeah. So at the end of last week, my brother threw a curveball. He, like, right before, right before, he had posted that thing about the rubber band ball, and it pissed me off, and he's like, oh, he's close to beating me. And I thought, damn it. Damn it, I, I should beat him or I'm angry at him. I'm just pissed off at him because he turns everything into a contest. And God damn it, he's such an asshole. I'm going to lash out at him. And then my brother threw a curveball. Yeah. He went into rehab. Ooh. And I'm kind of pissed off about that. Yeah. I'm kind of pissed off about that because basically what he did is that he Michael Jackson himself. Because because Michael Jackson was all like, oh, man, I think we, the globe, we, all of America, we hate this Michael Jackson guy. I mean, he's living in the Middle East for no reason. He's <laughs> constantly wearing a mask because people can't see him. He's putting his kids in, like, zoo masks when they go outside. Yeah. They're not allowed to go to school or spend any time away from their father. He's dangling them from balconies of hotels. Yeah. This Michael Jackson guy, he is just weird and bizarre and just we're going to make fun of him and he's going to be the butt of a million jokes and we hate him. And oh, wait, he's dead. What was I saying? Oh, yes. I've always loved Michael Jackson. Yeah. And no one is allowed to make fun of him ever. No. And so I feel that my brother, the son of a bitch, Michael Jackson, me. Yes. Now he's an a-hole, and I can't make fun of him because he's in goddamn rehab. Well, but so, that, but but the key here is that he's your asshole. He is my asshole. So he's you my always asshole. can. Yeah. So I was torn. And, if and there's, it was if an there's any perk to it, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Because by yeah. the same token... You, if he were to get cancer, you can still make fun of him. Yes. And you got cancer. Should. Way to go, you dumbass. I, I could not. Yeah, yeah, okay. I gotcha. So I was feeling awkward and I wasn't sure what to do, you know? Like, like how do I deal with my brother being an asshole and getting into this massive rubber band battle. And now he's in rehab and I wasn't sure what to do. And that's when it hit me. Yeah. 
I don't know a lot about mental institutions or rehab facilities like my brother does, but I I know a few things. Like I know if you go into a rehab facility, most of the time you got to like give up your phone. You can't be like texting and tweeting and checking your Facebook when you're in a rehab facility. You can't take in like a beer. Mm -hmm. You can't take in your phone and you certainly can't take in a seven pound rubber band ball to work on. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm back working on the rubber band ball. Go ahead. So I figured that my brother being in rehab was the perfect time to rocket past him and cement my legacy as the undisputed king of the goddamn rubber band ball because Joe can suck it. But then he got Yes, out of- yes, and it would be good to present that to him when he gets out of rehab. Yeah, but then he got out like a a day and a half later because apparently what happened was he was on this medication and uh, the doctor said, the medication's working out for you. Good, huh? Great. We're just going to give you four times as much as you were taking before. (laughs) And I'm sure everything will be fine. And my brother immediately went from being like a productive member of society to Ozzy Osbourne. Okay. Like suddenly he was shaking and he had a hard time keeping still and he would forget things and apparently he was hearing things and it was driving him nuts. So he went to his doctor and his doctor said, you know what this is? You're probably having DTs because you're such an alcoholic. You're going to rehab. Okay. And my brother tried to tell the doctor and tell his wife that, hey, this isn't, this isn't my alcoholism it's the pills i'm taking and apparently his wife and his doctor both said yeah nice try drunky okay see ya so my brother spent about a day and a half in the rehab facility until eventually uh the doctors at the rehab facility said yeah this guy isn't an alcoholic it's just the fucking pills he's on okay so they let him out but then my brother realized that yeah um so i i i took the dose I was taking of this medication down and I'm feeling a lot better on my normal self. But I now do realize, however, with the small amount of time that I spent in the rehab facility that I will be continuing to take these pills until the day I die and alcohol really fucks with these pills. And so, yeah, I guess I got to quit drinking. Yeah. He only realized that after he got out of the rehab facility for alcohol abuse, (laughs) but my brother is now trying to, quit drinking and good for him but um he's also a dick and he can suck it (laughs) but um, i'm i'm pretty sure that all of this drama about the rehab facility and uh the pills and turning into ozzy osbourne has really kept his eye off well there there comes a band ball which is the important thing here that's the important part of the story not your brother's mental health yeah Yeah, not my brother's mental health it's all about the rubber band ball yes yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. But but see, the thing is, is this is kind of the Trump effect. OK, because if you saw a picture of Trump giving a balloon to a little girl, you would still see just a giant dick. Yes. Yep. You know, there there yep. is no setting anymore. No photo op that would be nice enough for you to see anything but a giant dick maybe doing something nice. Yeah, but it's still a giant dick. Right. So it's the same. So it's it's the same yeah. sort of thing I feel that you are experiencing with your brother. Yeah. Like Hitler loved puppies. Yes. And painting. Yeah. But he's still Hitler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 